cry of the Holy Spirit, and thousands around you will be saved. So what is the what is the precondition of that? A little bit of humility, a little bit of humble mindedness. Huh? In other words, a little less ego. Mm -hmm. A little less ego. <coughs> when we suffer, that's an opportunity. It's a great opportunity for us to humble ourselves a little and attract the grace of God. The, uh, the fact is that St. Cyril and the Athenite focuses on this question in a big way because it was so much part of his struggle, so much part of his life. This question of, he saw everything in terms of how to attract the grace of God, the science, the great science of how to attract the grace of God, and then, most importantly, how to keep it. How to keep it. He talks about that in a great length. Yes? Uh, my question is, uh, when you talk a lot about silence and prayer and the importance of it, uh, obviously it's very difficult in, in our today's society, and I look at it even my children, in fact, ourselves, even our parents, but we're constantly on the phone, the cell phone, the texts, the emails, continue on and on and on. And I find more and more as we get more trapped into all the technology, we, it becomes harder to be silent because we're always used to doing something or you find that boredom instantly when you are silent. Or you break. Sometimes it feels good, but I'm just saying when I even look at the kids, they're, they're brought up now with the constant entertainment and you know, silence or getting away is almost unheard of. In fact, it makes them anxious because they're not around. And then we feel, well, sometimes, you know, if I go somewhere, I'm more anxious that I've got my phone than if I forgot my notes for the speaker, or, you know, the talk or whatever. So what, what's your, just like, feeling or just your, your observation of what can be done to help that situation out or, you know, especially in, in, the, in the children? Yes, thank you. Um, Thank you for that question, uh, because it's an important theme. Um, my basic point was that all of us, no matter what we're doing, no matter how good the things that we are doing are, we may be priests serving the church. Without exception, each and every one of us <coughs> needs a little alone time with God. Yeah. And in reference to your question, when our kids who are growing up in this fast-moving world see that example in us, that's what they will take away. That's what they will take away with them. What they see you doing. Not what they hear you saying. Isn't that true? You can tell you're blue in the face. But you know, an example is a very powerful thing. Example is a very powerful thing. And when they see that that is how mommy or daddy, uh, you know, from, it, from the, as young an age as possible, uh, that catches, that makes an impression. It makes a very deep impression. And they will learn that way too. You know, everyone, they're going to go through phases. They're going to go through difficulties. Everything is against, against the way of the church. The world is an en enmity with God. But, uh, you know, be of good cheer. Christ has overcome the world. That example is very powerful. And, um, uh, it just reminds me of what St. Porphyrios used to say 
about raising kids in general. You know, don't don't try to don't try to teach them. You know, tell God what you would like to tell them. <laughs> it's, it's more effective. It's, more, it's a more efficient way of getting through to them because God can inform the heart of each one of us in a way that even with the best intentions, you know, if you keep speaking and they don't see the example in you, it doesn't have the same impact. It can't. Last question. Uh, just to kind of respond to you too, um, I have a nephew who is just bouncing off the walls with all kinds of boy energy and it's very hard to sit still and I can kind of see where he's going to grow with all the technology and everything. And um, I think um, what I read an article about structure, structuring kids' times, that this is the time we put all that stuff away and now we go do this and we're, we're going to sit down and read now. And I think the church has that structure built into it. So I think that's also an important thing to bring kids to church. Um, and a lot of people say, oh, it's so hard to, to get the kids to church to sit still. But I think even little by little, if you kind of acclimate them to coming, that kind of reinforces it throughout every area of their life. Just yes, thank you. It's important to bring kids to church and that we support the parents who have young little kids crying. Yes. Yeah. yes, thank you. It has to be, uh, but in the context of them seeing you, uh, you know, going to church for the right reasons. Right. Right. Good. Okay.